Hi, thank you all for joining us to learn more about the look action principle of psychological first aid. We know this is a difficult time and that you all are going above and beyond to support families in coping with life stressors caused by or worsened by the pandemic. We hope that you find the following conversation around the look principle resourceful. Hi, my name is Anna Rondon. I'm one of the after school literacy coaches with the FIU's Center for Children and Families Reading Explorers team. Along with many other organizations funded by the Children's Trust, Reading Explorers is part of the Program and Professional Development Group. And I'm thrilled to be joined here with Camilla Gill, who's the Director of Arts and Education and Outreach at Thomas Armour Youth Ballet. And before we dive into our conversation on the look principle of psychological first aid, Camilla, would you be willing to share with other providers what you all at Thomas Armour Youth Ballet have noticed about the ways that families have been affected by and have responded to the COVID-19 situation? Of course, thank you, Anna, for allowing me to share on behalf of our team. Um, as you know, we have been able to continually engage about 65% of our registered families since March 30th, uh, when we first launched virtual programming. And we have been seeing both sides of the spectrum as it relates to the new reality that all of our families and we ourselves um, are currently experiencing. So we have seen families who are lucky enough to be able to stay at home together and those families whose parents are relying on neighbors, grandparents, and older siblings to look after the kids. Uh, we have seen families who are able to work from home and those who have lost their jobs and are now experiencing food and housing insecurity. Um, we have also observed uh, the kids whose demeanors have changed and we're looking at different kids from who we were used to seeing in person. Um, and I believe that that is a direct reflection and a result of the added stress and fear that many of our families are currently experiencing. Wow, 65% of families, that's a huge accomplishment. Congratulations to you guys yeah. for continuing to, to keep people with you. I think that in and of itself um, and you know everything that you're mentioning, it, it seems super clear that you and your team are doing everything you can. You're going above and beyond to respond to the various needs of the families that you you serve and you're working hard to remind them that you're here you're present um i'm really curious what's helped you and the rest of the thomas armor youth ballet remain this solid source of support for your families so i think um the key has been designating clear roles to every staff member um, since we've been working from home um, it has really made it possible to keep constant communication with almost 300 families we have assigned each person of the team to a number of families that they stay in touch with on a weekly basis and who they text if they see that the kids are not showing up to our Zoom classes um, or if they said, yeah, I'm gonna go in and then they don't see them, they're constantly like texting, calling with them directly. Um, and then we have weekly check-ins with each other, with the teams to understand, you know, what our engagement has been like that previous week, who we've lost touch with. We've unfortunately had a few families whose phone numbers get disconnected. So we're working to figure out, you know, if a friend from the program has heard from them or other ways that we can get back in touch with them. Um, but really this communication has allowed us to understand what types of resources we need to be sharing with our families. Um, in addition to the calls, we are constantly texting them food distribution sites in their areas or government help opportunities that they may be eligible for. Um, but I do think that the most valuable thing that we have been able to provide them with is just, like you were saying, a constant reminder that we're still very much there and that we care about the well-being of their child and their family during this time. You guys are really bringing a whole new meaning to the phrase, it takes a village. Definitely, it does take a village. <laughs> yes, I mean, the fact that you've really thought through and coordinated uh, you know, staff to participate in this giant effort uh, and then staff are, are willing and able um, and energized to, to be there for the kids. I think that says a lot about your culture too. Uh, 
Uh, it sounds like you're staying in close communication with the families you serve, and by doing this, you've really invited them to open up about the challenges that they've been facing. Definitely. What kind of role do you think staying informed on the changing situation has played in the discussions that you've had with your families? Well, staying informed not only about the current situation, but also about the resources that exist in our community and even learning about other organizations who have the ability to meet some of their needs that we ourselves can't meet for our families has been extremely valuable um, in just being able to empower them with information. And it really speaks to what you just said. It takes a village, and it's not just the TOIB village. It's the entire community village um, where we connect and share resources and refer our families to, to other agencies um, or organizations that are um, meeting other needs. Um, I have to say I have definitely been staying away from the news because it is a source of anxiety for me. Uh, so instead, I have attended any and every possible virtual gathering, community conversation where I can figure out where my place and TYB's place is in helping our families move forward. Um, I think it is really important to be in touch with our networks right now. And if you're not seeing that those conversations are happening, start them uh, because they're so, so valuable. Um, and also taking advantage of workshops um, like the ones you guys at Reading Explorers have been offering, you know, just to learn about virtual programming. We're all new to this, so just sharing tips with each other and we're learning as we go. Um, and taking Trust Academy trainings um, has also been a source of information for me. Um, the latest one that I watched was the one on the CDC guidelines on reopening. And it was really scary, but at the same time, very informative and, you know, just provides so much um, information and clarity as to what it would take to, to reopen our centers. Well, it certainly sounds like you found effective ways of communicating the facts uh, to the staff and to families, um, and you're doing it in a sensitive and caring fashion. And not only are you communicating the facts, it also sounds like you're really encouraging um, yourself and everybody around you uh, to get involved, to play a part. Um, and so I can really see how this could be useful for, for both children and adults, um, to, to help them understand the difference between real and imagined risks. And that can be really important as we're moving into this new phase where local communities will begin opening up. And um, specifically for our families, as we move into summer, everybody's wondering, you know, what's, what's happening with your summer camps, what, you know, what, um, and doing our best to, like you said, make responsible decisions that mean being safe for both our staff and our kids, uh, but also just remaining uh, available and a source of support and doing our best to continue delivering quality programming in whatever platform um, that is in the next few weeks. Opening. Right, there. Different communities are reopening at different fate, uh, different um, times, and so staying on top of that local news is even more uh, critical. Right, definitely. I mean, we're just gonna start seeing what opening phase one, what the results of that are, and so I think we need to be, um, you know, staying informed and doing the responsible thing for our families while still understanding our role in their lives, which is to provide safe and nurturing environments for their children so that they can go to work. Um, so it's, you know, I don't think that it's an easy decision, solution, uh, but just staying informed and continuing to be a source of support for them is our priority. You know, that it's natural to have that sense of anxiety. Um, <laughs> It serves an evolutionary purpose that we have that fear. And accurate information and offering that to families um, can arm them, right, with uh, the ability to really think carefully about what the, the true risks are. Um, and that, that's going to be really important for moving forward um, and, and kind of 
resuming in in some form of of normalcy. Definitely, I agree with you. Well, thank you so much, Camilla, for taking the time to talk with me, and um, thank you all for tuning into this video. And please uh, continue watching and continue continue uh, look, listen, and link. Thank you. Thank you, Anna.